Hi, I'm Peter Tragos, host of the Lawyer You Know podcast and YouTube channel. The saying goes, everyone hates lawyers until you need one. Well, I'm here when you need one to answer your questions and give you insight that you didn't know you needed. Along with my partners, Pete Sardis, the professor, who has a finance and business background, and George Tragos, my dad, and the conciliary, a criminal defense giant, we can answer any questions you have. What's up, fam? We're here talking legal TV shows, and there are a lot of them. There's no way to come up with a perfect top 10, but this is my top 10, and I would argue that it's pretty good. And I think that when you talk about top 10s, it really depends on what your grading score is. Um, with how you come up with your top 10. So I'm going to tell you what I love in a legal TV show. And you guys can agree or disagree and let me know what yours are in the comments and in the chat. Um, but but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out just totally blasting a couple shows that I think were horrible um, and are terrible. And I hate watching and I'll explain to you why. And I've already talked about one of them before. Um, but this is going to be as interactive as possible. We're going to have a good time like we did with the legal movies in the top 10 there with a smaller, more intimate crew here discussing this, because it's a lot of fun. I like doing this stuff. You guys wanted to do this as a topic, and feel free to keep sending topics in on the community pages that let me know kind of the more fun, not necessarily heavy, legal, deep dives um, into specific subjects. But today's show is my top 10 legal TV shows of all time. What makes a great legal TV show? Let me know in the comments and in the chat what you think makes a great legal TV show. To me, what makes any show great is a great character or set of characters with depth that makes you love them or hate them or want to hang out with them or want to be around them or want to watch them get uh, the vengeance that is coming their way or want vengeance to be taken against them. Sometimes a really great heel or bad antagonist can make a show great. Um, So to me, great characters and character development is one. Second to me is realism. Some some realistic format here that lets us know this is a legitimate legal TV show. They had legitimate people with legal backgrounds help write the show and come up with the show. Um, And I'll say, so somebody said, what do you mean by legal? I mean, a show that's about the legal system with lawyers and judges and a courtroom and a case. That's really what I mean by legal TV shows. I don't mean law enforcement. I don't mean NYPD Blue or um, Chicago Fire or something like that. I guess some people could say those connect and become legal TV shows at some point, but um, that is not what I mean. I mean more it's centered around the courtroom or a legal case or lawyers and their lives and things like that. Um, it can't be totally unrealistic. It can't be like every five seconds I'm saying to myself, that would never happen. That would never happen. That would never happen. That would never happen. Um, and you'll see that my top show has all of these elements with one caveat. The overarching theme of the show is totally unrealistic and would probably never happen or be very unlikely to happen. And it definitely wouldn't resolve like it resolves in that case. But once you kind of put that aside, the rest of the show is amazing and hits all these beats. Um, next factor that's taken into consideration that is absolutely necessary for a good legal TV show is there has to be interesting cases with twists and turns, a little bit of mystery, a little bit of gotcha, some smoking gun moments, some big deposition moments, some big moments in the trial, some issues with witnesses, um, you know, a, a, a dirty judge or a dirty cop or a dirty lawyer or something. I like all of that. To me, um, that is a really cool and important part for a legal TV show. Because again, remember, we're not talking about a movie. So sometimes if it's just one case, and there are some shows like that, even to show one of the shows on my list, actually a couple of the shows on my list where it's just one case, I think that's harder because I think when there are kind of multiple cases, it keeps your attention multiple lawyers and judges that you get to know on the show. I think to me, that's, that's a big indication of a good legal show. Um, now 
I'm going to give two examples of shows that are not on my list and why that most of you are going to say that this isn't even a real list if these aren't on there. Okay. The first one is how to get away with murder. I think they have a great character in that show, great lead actress in that show, but it is so unrealistic and so horrible that I had to stop watching it in the middle of season one. I just could not even get through it. So that is one reason some of these shows that some of you will mention, um, why I'll tell you they don't get on is because they're just bad shows. And if it's a bad show and it's horribly unrealistic, I just can't watch it as a lawyer. Some other genres, I can watch totally unrealistic shows and have no problem with it. But the legal genre for me, that's pretty difficult. And that show absolutely falls in that bucket and is out. Now, show number two, which is going to be my example of a group of shows as to why they are not on the list is because although recently a lot of you recommended this to me and I am going to actually try to watch it because you've given me some qualifiers here is better call Saul not on the list, but only because I have never seen it. And there are going to be some, some shows I've never seen that you all are going to tell me are great. And those are going to fall in the recommendations category and the reason I never saw Better Call Saul is because I didn't watch Breaking Bad. I started it 50 times. I kind of got bored with it and it was so depressing. And I like to watch stuff that makes me happy um, instead of real life stories that are uh, make me sad all the time that I have to deal with. And I don't want to go and, and watch um, Breaking Bad. But I have been told that you do not need to watch Breaking Bad to watch and enjoy Better Call Saul. So now that I know that, I will check it out and see how I like it. I see some people saying they love Better Call Saul and they saw it before Breaking Bad and other people saying it's like watching paint dry. So I do think that I am going to check that show out. Lastly, okay, the last entire group that just missed the cut basically and it's because it's hard to choose because there's so many of them and they're so different is Law & Order. So Law & Order is not technically on the list. But I do like Law & Order. And my sister was obsessed with Law & Order and I watched a ton of it as a kid. But what I want to know is, and I don't even know all the little subsections of Law & Order, but what is your favorite sub subsection of Law & Order or sub show of Law & Order? Some of them are very unrealistic. There is some realism in parts of them. Um, but my favorite, so, so let me know what yours is in the comments of the chat, but I'm also going to I always do a poll on the members only community page after I do a video like this. And I, that is going to be the poll that's going to post, I think today at three or four o'clock. Um, what is your favorite subsect of the law and order shows? And mine may be an unpopular opinion. It's kind of weird. I don't know why. Um, but the ones I found most interesting and, you know, the craziest stories with twists and turns and mysteries was SVU. It's kind of weird and, you know, twisted. And as those are the darker kind of episodes, but SVU was by far my favorite. Um, oh, okay. I'm seeing here actually the most common one. So some people saying I like the original, some people saying criminal intent, but the vast majority of you, it's Joe McKinley, Tori, FKA, Rachel, um, rocks, Joe, all saying they also love SVU, Diane, um, SVU is their favorite too. And Maria. So that's funny. Um, I thought I was going to be in a corner by myself liking SVU, but, but it, it's, it was really interesting and it, and it was cool to watch, but it does not make, it does not make my top 10. Um, we are going to start with one that's a little unusual as top 10. And I think it's a little outside the box, but it should be right up this community's alley because you all love real life cases. And you all love seeing what is a realistic case like we talked about with great characters and great actors. And number 10 on my list is the American Crime Story version of the O.J. Simpson case. That is number 10. I've watched a couple other ones and some other shows like this that are kind of like reenactments and things like that. Sometimes they're boring. Sometimes they're decent. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes the characters are a little hokey or very unrealistic. But to me, that show 
was some of the greatest acting, the most interesting storytelling, the highlights of a very high profile case that I think were mostly accurate. Um, obviously, they had to take some liberties here and there, but I thought it was riveting. I couldn't wait to watch it. That's another. Um, this actually should be higher than ten on my list. I'm already. I'm already convincing myself. Um, but like when you can't wait to watch it, and that was one I actually had to wait to watch. I DVR'd it and then would watch it every week, and I loved it. And that's another indication that it's a great show. When you have to watch the whole thing, you don't just stop in the middle of it. If you binge watch any of these um, things like that. So that is a must watch to me for anybody that follows this channel or any of the other lawyers on YouTube and you want like a depiction of these real life cases, go watch that. You will enjoy it. It won several Emmys, Linda told me. All right. Number nine, the OG on the list. And it had to be on the list. This is probably the first lawyer show I ever watched. And I watched it mostly with my grandmother not my dad's mom, my mom's mom, actually, which is even more interesting because no lawyers in her family. Um, and it's funny to think about this show and a couple other shows that I watched before I was a lawyer, which is very different from shows I watched after I became a lawyer. And this show is Matlock. Matlock was different than a lot of the shows that, so I see people saying Perry Mason. I, I never watched Perry Mason, but um, Matlock very different than, you know, the movies like Liar Liar and all these movies and a lot of the shows I'm going to get to where the lawyers were cool or they had cool stories or cool cases. Matlock was actually a kind of lawyer that you wanted to be. It's like, I want to be like Matlock. It would be awesome if I was like Matlock when I grew up or when I become a lawyer. You can't say the same about a lot of these other um, characters on here uh, and some of the shows, even though they're great characters and even though I love them and even though they're the reason I, I watch the show. Um, eventually I got to get a graphic that like pops up and just kind of stays on the screen where it's like number 10, real crime story, OJ Simpson, number nine, Matlock. So everybody can remember, but I do have the list over here that, um, if anybody jumps in late, we can recap where we're at. Uh, yes. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you, Rich Cat. Um, number eight, another one that my grandmother and my mom were obsessed with for a long time. And I think I know the reason I like this show so much. Um, that is JAG, Judge Advocate General. I believe it was on USA. It was one of those shows. Studly main character, really cool storylines, different because it's, you know, dealing with uh, martial law. Um, and character development was really great throughout the show. Really cool twists and turns in the arguments. And I think the reason I look back on it and really like it, Columbo was good. I didn't put Columbo on the list, but Columbo was good. Um, is because of the connection to A Few Good Men. Um, the, the Jag and The Few Good Men connection, I think, you know, being my number one legal movie and, and having a TV show like Jag was a really cool kind of crossover to, to think of the similarities and know a little bit about how that works from watching A Few Good Men it was really cool. Um, Jag was really cool, but it was like a very USA type show. You know, um, if, if you watch a lot of USA shows, you'll know what I mean. All right. Next up, this is a lesser known show here. I've got a couple that are lesser known that I need your feedback. If you do go back and watch. Um, and that is number seven on the list for the people who has watched for the people. And the next couple are, I watched after I was a lawyer like this one. For the People is specifically about um, the Southern District of, you know, of New York, which is one of the basically the highest level of court trial courts you can have. And it is the U.S. Attorney's Office and uh, the Federal Public Defender's Office. It's a bunch of young attorneys that are starting, a couple more brand new, and then there's a couple supervisors. Um, and they also involve the actual Federal Public Defender is involved. And then the guy... That was literally my dad and had my dad's position in the middle district of Florida, who is the chief assistant U S attorney over all of the criminal cases in his district. My dad was the, the middle district of Florida. Um, and he makes all the charging decisions. You meet the U S attorney as well. And you see how he's kind of political. I felt like it was very realistic. The judges are all top notch judges and that's legit in that district. And they're the ones that 
you know, get tapped for the big positions. And a lot of the Supreme Court justices used to sit on this bench. Um, so it's very prestigious. And, uh, and it was a very cool show, very cool actors in it that I've seen in other shows. The main um, guy whose mom, I think, was a politician and he was like a top dog, tall, dark and handsome kind of trial lawyer. Very, very kind of full of himself. But his character was really cool. I enjoyed it, especially when he got softened up here and there and humbled a little bit, um, you know, made you like him even more. Uh, there was a show where this girl's name was Lux that I used to watch and she was in this show. She's a blonde girl, really cool character. Um, seems a little young, which made me like it even more because there are people that, gosh, I don't know. I wish I knew actors' names. I'm sorry. People are asking me for actors' names. I don't know any of these actors' names. Um, the guy I think was in The Crown or some Netflix show. I don't know. I, I don't know his name though, but he's a really, really great actor. Um, the guy that was like the stud, good trial lawyer. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, I love the show. I can't recommend it enough. I think it was only a season or two, which is also a common theme, which may tell you I'm not the best person to review, uh, movies or TV shows. So Alexis, the good wife, hold on. I, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the rest of the list. All right. Number six, my first comedy show on the list. Um, and the first, the first mention of this guy that we all know from a different show. Um, but I'll just jump right to it. Franklin and Bash. That is number six on the list. I thought that show was so funny. Did not hit the realism uh, box for me or it would have been higher, but I love me some Zach Morris, um, Mark Paul Glosser. There's an actor I know. And I love, I don't know what the other guy's name is, but he's been in a ton of stuff. This show was hilarious. Oh, and I love the dude that was like their, their research assistant. He's uh, uh, been in some other movies too. He's really funny. Um, but I, I love the show. I thought it was funny. They had some like funny cases. It kept your attention. It, it made me want to keep watching it every week. I look forward to it. It's a comedy, funny show, buddy cop type of vibe, but they're lawyers. Um, and they're young, kind of like cool guys and they have very different personalities. Um, Ooh, just uh, BKZ. Don't, don't spoil a, a future. Uh, don't spoil a future one on the list here. Zach Morris. This is not the last time attorney Zach Morris is going to be um, is going to be on this list. So stay tuned. Number five, a Netflix show here. And it was cool because it makes me think of cases that I handle where you sue big companies and um, you try to get big verdicts and things like that. But it also has a common theme with a lot of these shows where it's kind of either a drunk or downtrodden or, you know, a lawyer that's on the outs and struggling with things in life. He has his family life is all messed up and he's trying to figure out how to make this work. He used to be a really good big shot lawyer, but now he's kind of down on his luck and he gets this case and he uncovers a big conspiracy. And that is Goliath with um, Billy Bob Thornton is the main character in Goliath. And I will say, I think season one was by far my favorite season two was pretty good. And I stopped watching season three. So it kind of went, off a cliff there. Um, funny uh, story with Goliath. My father-in-law uh, does some like movie or a TV show reviews for net Netflix. And uh, he did a review for season three. I think they used him and that's the one I stopped watching. So I, I told him maybe he needs to, he needs to uh, level up his uh, TV review. Um, but uh, it was a really cool story. Lots of twists and turns, big conspiracy, really cool trial scenes. They let you see how hectic it is being a lawyer and dealing with you know, big companies when you're a solo or small firm, that stuff was all was all really cool in my opinion. I, I thought that show was really good. Yeah, Billy Bob was really good in it. Um, okay, number four. Now, you, you guys have definitely heard of number one and two, but three and four, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of, so put them on your list because they are good. I don't know where you can find this anymore. I randomly stumbled upon it. I think my parents watched it and recommended it. But this is called The Guardian. Not the TV show, or I'm sorry, not the movie with Kevin Costner and Ashton Kutcher, but the TV show about a stuck up rich kid lawyer whose dad is managing firm at a, a managing partner at a big firm. Um, and the kid ends up getting a drug charge and has to do community service and the judge knows his dad. And so the kid comes in the, I say kid, he's like a 30 something year old guy 
comes into the courtroom and the judge says, you know what, for your community service, what you have to do is you have to go be a guardian ad litem. And uh, Lexi Marie has seen it. It is awesome. It is. The acting is great. The characters are great. The stories just tug at your heartstrings because he's dealing with kids and helping kids. And it's how this guy goes from being a jerk to a really great guy. And he's a good lawyer. And he kind of doesn't trust that he's a good lawyer because he's living in his dad's shadow. But then when he does this guardian work, he like really feels it, and pushes through. His dad is uh, Dabney Coleman, I think. Really good actor as well. I'm not sure where you can watch Guardian, but you need to put it on your list and try to find it. Um uh, so really cool show. And the main character, and again, I don't know his name, of course, but I think he, I think people mentioned, is it Bull? He's either in Bull, no, not Bull. He's like a psychic or something in another like USA or TNT show. He's got blonde hair. Um, if you Google the Guardian, you'll see it. It's, I don't think it's Bull. I don't remember, but he's in another show that was much bigger than Guardian that came after Guardian. Um, but yeah, I think that if you haven't checked out Guardian, definitely check it out. It's a great show. All right, number three, another one that maybe you haven't heard of. I know somebody has already mentioned it in the chat, though. Simon Baker, that's his name. Yes, Linda, thank you. Simon Baker is the actor's name. You guys had so much to this. Like I, This would have no context if it wasn't for the, uh, the chat, so thank you for that. Um, next up is the second time we're going to see uh, Zach Morris as an attorney. And that is a little show called Raising the Bar. If we were going to give an award for most underrated show, The Mentalist, that's what Team YouTube said. Yes, thank you. Um, if we were going to give an award for most underrated legal TV show, I think it would be Raising the Bar. I loved it. I love Zach Morris. I already did love Zach Morris as a kid. So having him with his long hair as a lawyer who all he cared about was his clients. I think he was a public defender. He didn't care about money. He was just like doing everything for his clients, which got him into trouble because he would almost do some like illegal things to try to help his clients. So I kept banging my head against the wall like, dude, you can't actually do that. You're hurting yourself. He ended up in jail multiple times. It was way too short. I want to say it was only maybe two or three seasons. It was so good. I loved it. Um, it was literally Zach Morris at his finest. And the saddest part about this movie is when you Google raising the bar, some teenage gymnastics movie pops up before this epic show, which is just a travesty if you ask me. But I loved it. It is great courtroom drama, trial scenes, dealing with difficult clients. You can learn a lot about that through this show. Um, it was, it was really, really, really good. I loved it. All right. On to number two on the list. And it is a comedy. And now I'm going to have you guys guess number two, and then I'll have you guess number one. It is a comedy about a big firm. I guess it's a spinoff, but I never saw the show. It was a spinoff of, um, it's not better call Saul. We already talked about that. So it, I didn't think a comedy could get this high, but when I look back and me and my dad watched this show a ton together, we quote this show all the time. We talk about scenes from this show all the time. Um, and it, it is, it is iconic. The characters are iconic. Um, and the show I'm referencing here, that's number two on my list is Boston legal with Denny Crane, um, William Shatner as the main character, uh, uh, Spader or Spade or something is the other guy, Alan Shore. Um, the guy that plays the other show that I liked also where he is like this, you know, con man or whatever. Um, but, um, uh, what is, I can't remember what that show is called, but he, he, he was huge in that other show that I also watched on, on USA or something like that. But Boston legal was hilarious. My dad always loves the scenes and always wanted a, you know, a back porch where you could sit on the back porch and smoke cigars and drink a scotch at the end of the day. Um, you know, when it's cold outside in Boston, we don't really have that here in Clearwater, Florida, but, um, we quote the, you know, names on the door, Denny Crane, a lot of quotes come from that show. It was really cool. And it was, uh, it was, um, multiple seasons, multiple good characters, cool cases. Alan Shore always struck me as, um, the better lawyer. You know, he was like the lawyer's lawyer, did a really good job. Blacklist. That was the other one. I knew somebody would throw it out there. Blacklist is the other show James Spader is in. Um, but yeah, really cool show. Would recommend it. It's an easier watch. It's almost like The Office, but for lawyers. All right. 
Number one show. It has the absolute best lawyer on TV ever that I've ever seen. Not close. Uh, so somebody saying Bosch number one, uh, Sherry, I'm going to have to jump in and say not considered a legal show to me because I absolutely loved Bosch. It would absolutely be on this list if I considered a legal show. If we bring cop shows into this, then it's like, you know, no holds bar. But I agree with there's a lot of courtroom scenes and that is really close to being a legal TV show. I did not consider it one. That is the only reason it's not on this list because I love Bosch. Sorry for interrupting my, my number one legal show. It has one of the most unrealistic overarching storylines, but it is big firm life. It is, there are some legit cases, some legit decisions you have to make. The offices were amazing and beautiful and so cool. And I took some elements of that when designing my office. Um, uh, I loved the characters. I loved the relationships between the characters. The characters went on to do kind of bigger things after as well. Um, and it was longstanding. And then it ended kind of with a bang. And without further ado, number one legal TV show of all time, in my opinion, is Suits. And mainly who we have to thank for that is Harvey Specter, of course, the greatest lawyer to ever enter a TV screen. Um, and the most quotable lawyer of all time, I quote him all the time as well. And it's funny and it's not necessarily how I ascribe to being a lawyer or a lot of them are not very moral or nice quotes, but they're kind of funny and they kind of depict what people think of a big New York lawyer. Um, and their law firm was beautiful and awesome. And they had partner troubles and they had, you know, whose associate is this, whose paralegal is this and how paralegals run the show a lot of times, which is true. And, you know, Donna was such an amazing character. Um, it was, it's, it's the best. It's such a great show. Now the premise is that Mike is like a genius. Mike is, ends up being Harvey's um, associate. He's a genius. Photographic memory was kind of a loser dork, like pothead. And he would take um, LSATs for people. So he knew the LSAT. He is running away from the cops. He shows up at an interview, impresses Harvey Specter. Harvey Specter hires him. Oh, but he's not really a lawyer. And then he goes on to practice law without a license for a long time. And I'm not going to spoil the ending, but um, it, 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 that part of it is so unrealistic, but if most of the time that part doesn't matter. Um, and the rest of the show is amazing. Um, yes, the Duchess was, was in it. She was fine. I don't think she was that big of a character. I didn't like love her or hate her. I think she's pretty. Um, and she was like Mike's love interest. So her, I liked her dad. Her dad was like a big shot lawyer man, and he's been in other stuff too. Big shot lawyer, managing partner at a competing firm. I loved that and how she was a paralegal with that firm ends up going to, to law school. So I think her, uh, her character was fine, but Donna was by far hands down best besides Harvey Specter. Donna was the next best thing. Um, so I want to read some quotes just cause it's, it's very funny and I'll let you know how Harvey Specter is. The only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. I'm not about caring. I'm about winning. I'm against having emotion. I'm sorry. I'm against having emotions, not against using them. I don't play the odds. I play the man. That's when I've quoted a lot. Um, that's the difference between you, me and you. You want to lose small. I want a big win big. I don't have dreams. I have goals. It could be, this is another one that I, that I, uh, reference. Um, I could be drinking a, a juice box and still want to kick your butt. He doesn't say butt. Uh, I'm not interested in great. I want to know who its daddy is. Uh, sometimes good guys got to do bad things to make the bad guys pay. It's not bragging if it's true. Work until you no longer have to introduce yourself. Uh, it's going to happen because I'm going to make it happen. I like to smile at people who don't like me. I actually do like to do that. That's another one I ascribe to, especially in trial or in litigations. Um, don't raise your voice, improve your argument. It's another good quotable one. You want to change your life, change the way you think, kill them with success, bury them with a smile. Win a no-win situation by rewriting the rules. Let them hate, just make sure they spell your name right. Cool, pretty cool. So some, and there's a ton more, obviously, that are that are great quotes from that. Um, Lisa, that could be that could be it. You know, I like watching the big the big law shows sometimes, just because it's a little bit of a different speed. Um, and maybe I don't know how unrealistic it is, right? Never worked in a huge uh, New York mega firm that handles you know mergers and acquisitions, but I like to think I know a little bit about it since I have a lot of friends that do it, and I've been involved in 
side areas that kind of touch on that, but it's, that is cool. That's, that's really cool. Um, I have never used the lines with a client in court, but I have you, I have said lines like that in court. I actually, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll save some, some of those stories for, for another time because they don't really have anything to do with this, but, um, the good wife, let's just talk about the good wife as an honorable mention. The good wife was on this list for a long time. I take this list seriously. Okay. I don't just write 10 names down. I think through a lot of different shows. I will give Better Call Saul a chance. The Good Wife. I actually really enjoyed The Good Life. Um, Gabriel Mock, is that? Who is Gabriel? Oh, that's Harvey Specter. Yeah, I was like, I know I've heard that name before, but he's Harvey Specter to me. All right. The Good Wife is my number one spy, C. Dre says. Um, so here's my thoughts on The Good Wife. I really enjoyed it. I love the main character really good legal aspects. It shows what it's like to be an associate. It shows what it's like to be an associate who people uh, maybe underestimate too, because maybe you're not what everybody expects as an associate coming out of law school to look like or act like. Uh, see you, Lisa. Um, but here's why the good wife wasn't, didn't um, make the list for me. I stopped watching it because I got really bored like a season or two into it. They did not develop the characters enough, in my opinion. They didn't have enough cool cases. Um, I, I'm trying to go back and look at if I had to take one off. I mean, I guess The Good Wife was probably similar to Jag for me. But Jag was very different, so that's kind of why it made the list. I wanted to have kind of some different flavors to talk about. Um but it was a good show. I just, it couldn't be a top 10 show for me because it's available for me to watch and I don't even watch it. You know, like I just got kind of bored with it. I felt like it lost my attention. Um, so that's kind of, you know, how, how that just missed the list, but I do like it. And I took a lot of your other suggestions. Some I've seen, some I haven't. The number one that I had now, now is the time for the chat. If you have just one legal TV show that I have to watch, let me know what it is right now. Better Call Saul is number one on my list right now that I have to watch. But whatever one gets the most comments in the chat right now is going to be number two on my list as far as what other legal TV show I need to watch. And... Yeah, I'm telling you, Chloe, go watch it. It's really cool. Um, but this was a lot of fun. I, I did star. Okay, I started a good wife comment here. Oh, and then Nadia also mentioned the Lincoln lawyer. We've talked about that a little bit. I didn't love the characters. I thought the storyline was pretty cool. Thought it could have been a lot better. Um, I didn't hate it by any chance. It wasn't on like the how to get away with murder spectrum at all for me. Um, but... I just didn't think it was that great, um, the Lincoln Lawyer. All right. Um, seeing people say, I better call Saul. Uh, it's Joe. I will talk to you. I'll answer that question in a second. Benched. Con. I don't know what all those are. Uh, it's Joe McKinley said, Peter, what's the difference between an associate and another title? So there are all sorts of different titles for lawyers when you go into law firms. Um, we'll start at the top and kind of make our way down. Uh, named partner is the top because the law firm's literally named after you. Managing partner is kind of the, the boss partner that makes most of the decisions. Then you have equity partners who own the firm. Then you have non-equity partners or junior partners, which are technically partners, but they don't own the firm. They don't make the same amount of money. They don't share in the revenue. They're not as high of a decision maker. Then you have senior associates, which are older, more experienced associates on the partner track. Then you have associates, and then you can have junior associates, but all associates are on a partner track and to eventually become a partner one day, if they do a good job, if they bring in enough business, um, if they impress the partners, they can become a partner. Um, not all firms have junior and senior partners or junior and senior associates. Some firms are just associate, partner, and then managing partner, name partner, things like that. Um, but you can also have on the side of that of counsel or litigation counsel um, that 
is a lawyer that works at the firm, but is not necessarily on the partner track. Sometimes that can be a more experienced lawyer or a lawyer that doesn't really want to be a partner or a lawyer that, you know, wants to have the freedom to go start his own firm if he wants to, um, whatever that may be. So those are all the different kind of titles lawyers can have in a law firm. All right. LA Law, Perry Mason, like the new Perry Mason, because I think there's a new Perry Mason. You mean the new one or the old one? Got to be honest with you. And you're probably not going to like me, but I think you've realized by now I'm not exactly like a, a critically acclaimed uh, movie and TV um, reviewer. Really old movies and shows are hard for me to get into, although I did love the old original version of 12 Angry Men, which you all recommended. I loved it. Um, so I think the old Perry Mason may be hard for me and Columbo I've watched already. So yes, damages and murder one. I don't know if you guys have seen those, but those are some that my family loved that I never watched. So maybe, and obviously murder, uh, I mean, uh, damages is right up my alley. Perry Mason, Matlock. Yes. LA law judging Amy. I think I saw judging Amy, but I can't remember right now. I think the one with Brian Cranston you're talking about is the one where his son, like he's a judge and his son does something. I started watching it. I thought it was kind of boring. Um, yeah, Damages with Glenn Close. That seems to be the second most, um, any British ones maybe I missed. Yeah, I actually just watched one where, what was it called? It was really good British one. It's really cool British trials. Totally different how they do it over there. I wish I could remember what it was called. It's a newer show and it was awesome. Me and my wife watched it. Um, okay, so Damages, Murder One, and Better Call Saul seem like the top three. I I, I, know, I see Perry Mason and Columbo in those, but I think these three are kind of more something I could actually jump into here. When I finish Echoes, I'm watching that right now on Netflix, and it's it's not great, but and it seems so dumb and unrealistic, but I'm halfway through it, so now i got to see how it ends. What is everybody else watching on Netflix, non-legal shows? Any good shows on Netflix out there before we bounce? I'm going to leave here in about two minutes. Um, so thank you, everybody that's joined. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't liked the video already, hit that like button. Um, and we've got a Deshaun Watson update video tomorrow. I am going to be doing that FJA Young Lawyers Golf Tournament tomorrow. So we'll be posting on our Instagram and Twitter some pictures and videos of that. So follow us at Tragos Law if you haven't already. Um, but after I'm done with that tournament is when I'm going to reach out to Rob from Law and Lumber and see if we can't set up a little law tube golf tournament. Uh, oh, great. Julia said echoes wasn't worth the wait. Great. I'm going to waste another two or three hours on that. Started Lincoln Lawyer on Netflix. Yeah, I watched it. I didn't love it. Trevor Summers. I just did a video on it today. Uh, so go watch it. Uh, Sherry, tell your friends if it gets enough action, I will do more of that, uh, probably next week. A recap of the verdict because I think they're supposed to get a verdict this weekend. Um, I mean, the UK give us a clue. It was a guy, the, the content is kind of explicit, but it was a guy who had relations with a lot of women um, and he thought it was consensual, but based on a lot of the facts, he starts to think like, maybe I'm missing some red flags of when this stuff starts. And he ends up going to trial because his like legislative aid, he was a politician and his legislative aid accused him of a non-consensual activity, but they used to have an affair. So it was like very gray area, and, but the trial was just really cool. And there was a big twist at the end that, that made it very cool. Oh, and Mary from Downton Abbey was the lawyer in it. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll give you an indication as to what it was. Um, yes, Rich Cat, it does, but a lot going on. Once I get through this golf tournament, I can start start planning the next one. Um, yes. All right. You all are the best. This is so fun. Um, you make it really fun. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody coming in, sharing their experiences, their TV shows. Um, I appreciate everybody who's a member of the channel. It's fun to do stuff like this. We'll plan another one of these. Uh, check out that community uh, post for which uh, law and order you like the best. Um, so hopefully SVU just runs away with it, right? So uh, so everybody can can agree there. But I appreciate all you as always. This was fun. This was light. Um, I like doing these. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you did, and let me know by liking the video on your way out. For now, that's all we've got.